I want you to think about your grandma. If you got more than one, just pick your favorite. Now, I don't know anything about this person, and I'm sure she's great. But there is no doubt in my mind that I would kick her ass in Super Smash Bros. She can practice all she wants, but her pathetic senior citizen reaction times are simply no match for my fearsome Zoomer superpowers. It's just fact, and we all know it. But what if I told you there is something deeper going on here? You see, asking if I would dunk on your grandma might be a pointless question, but asking why? Now that's where it gets interesting. So what's the science behind concepts like reaction time, cognitive decline, and old people being ass at video games? Is there anything you can do to improve your shitty reactions? Are we justified to make old man jokes about 26-year-old gamers on Twitter? And most importantly, at what exact age will you become completely, scientifically, tragically unable to react to Falcon Punch? The answers to these questions are all depressing as fuck, but hey, misery loves company, so they're in this video. I'm Waidu, I make YouTube gaming content, and let's talk about the unavoidable decay of your mind and body. But like in a fun way, subscribe. At first, reaction time seems pretty simple. It's just the time it takes you to react, and measuring it couldn't be easier. There are countless websites out there where you click a button and it spits out the number that decides your fate like some kind of gamer horoscope. But sadly, like everything else in life, turns out reaction time is needlessly complicated and makes me want to cry. Let's look at an example. This website, humanbenchmark.com, says its average reaction time is 215 milliseconds. Of course, because us fighting game players have transcended the metric system, we need to convert to frames, or 60th of a second, instead of those disgusting milliseconds used by weaklings like scientists and engineers. Anyway, that's 13 frames of reaction time, and if we add that to Smash Ultimate's 6 frames of input lag, we find that the quickest thing the average humanbenchmark.com user can react to should be around frame 19, the speed of this attack, King K Rules Forward Smash. And it's true, I used a third party tool to make him punch randomly, and I totally can react and block. But there's just one problem. That's kind of a complete lie. Uh, don't get me wrong, I am reacting in my cozy practice mode, but if I went into an actual game thinking I was invincible because I did some math, I'm in for a bit of a reality check. Since it turns out that no matter how sick your humanbenchmark.com score is, this obese crocodile will punch you in the face in real games. And to explain why, I need to talk about cheese. To clarify, I absolutely do not need to, but I want to. Okay, so you ever see that documentary about the guy who ate literally nothing but mac and cheese for 17 years? Because I think about it a lot. This man sits down every night and eats the exact same flavor of Velveeta mac and cheese. Now you, I'm sure, probably eat way more kinds of food than just cheesy macaroni, which is for the better, to put it lightly. But while you might eat better dinners than that guy, why don't you take a wild guess which one of you makes dinner faster? You see, in terms of raw speed, Mr. Mac and Cheese kinda has you beat. He doesn't have to make any choices, he just reaches into the cabinet, grabs a box of good old Velveeta Mac, and dumps it into the pot. That's it. And you know what? When I'm in training mode, reacting to this punch, that's kind of the gaming version of eating only mac and cheese. Sure, it's quick and easy, but in real tournament matches, people won't just be chucking Velveeta at me. They're throwing broccoli, they're throwing cheesecake, they're throwing Guy Fieri's bacon mac and cheeseburger, and reacting to only one of them isn't enough to win. For each option, my brain needs to spend time deciding what it is and preparing a response. Shield the Falcon Punch, don't shield the Shield Breaker. That's why there's actually a huge difference between simple and choice reaction time. If it's as straightforward as clicking your mouse when you see green, your brain can react as fast as biology allows. But if there's also a decision, especially one between a bunch of different things, your brain will be way slower. And while improving simple reaction time requires you to do scary things like exercising regularly and sleeping 7 hours a night, you can thankfully improve your choice reactions just by gaming in your basement. That's because practice and mastery of a specific skill will dramatically speed up the choices you have to make when reacting. Kind of like how the better you get at cooking, the quicker you'll get at combining flavors and whipping up meals on the fly. Gordon Ramsay could have a whole five-course feast planned out in the time it takes me to open a cookbook, and the top Smash player would out-smash me in much the same way. You know, thinking about it, I could actually really go for a bacon mac and cheeseburger right now. Just wanted you to know. Anyway, the weirdly complex nature of reaction time causes a big problem with many attempts to study it. Lack of external validity. That's a term that describes how well the results of a study translate to real life. 
If your experiment is conducted in training mode or on humanbenchmark.com or even in a lab, you might come to conclusions that are totally wrong in real situations where things matter. That's why the 2014 study I'm about to talk about is so interesting. It was conducted based on telemetry data from an earlier paper about StarCraft II. That data set included over 3,300 StarCraft players, and most importantly, it's 100% from actual matches. I could talk all day about how studies based on data collected from video games will revolutionize the fields of psychology and cognitive science, but I won't, because they're mostly just going to use that data to sell you loot boxes. This one's cool, though. The researchers used a fancy algorithm to define these looking-doing cycles that describe the real-world reaction process, with the end result being a study that focused on choice-based practical reaction time with respect to player skill and age. Wait a sec, that's weird. I wonder why they called it Over the Hill at 24. Oh god. So the study found that reaction time stays pretty constant until about the age of 24. And please note that I did say constant, they only included players aged 16 to 44, but between 16 and 24 there was no evidence of decline whatsoever. So if you're 23 and you keep losing to your 16 year old cousin, sorry to burst your bubble but you kinda just suck. Uh, that or they're godlike, one of the two. Regardless, once you reach 24, the study found your choice based reactions do start to decline, and they decline surprisingly fast. It says that, holding skill constant, a 39-year-old StarCraft II player can be expected to react 15% slower than a 24-year-old in real games. I don't know about you, but to me, 15% in 15 years is kind of a lot. You think playing Smash on Wi-Fi is bad? Just wait a decade or two, it'll be like you're on shitty Wi-Fi all the time, and it just keeps on getting shittier by the year! But, but I won't panic. This is a scientific, factual video. Let's keep reading and see if there's a more optimistic side to the story. Oh look, see, th here's something cool. To quote the paper, the effect of age, even in what most consider young adulthood, can be expected to offset a sizable proportion of what has taken older players hundreds or even thousands of hours to achieve. What the f- Okay, if there is a silver lining here, it's this. Despite the massive disadvantage of slowed reactions, these scatter plots of age versus reaction time at different StarCraft II skill ranks show many players still performing great in their 30s. And keep in mind, there are lots of other factors here besides just brain deterioration. To name a couple, you get more responsibilities as you age, making it harder to stay godlike. Unsurprisingly, older participants reported playing less hours per week, and honestly, video games in general are still pretty new. The gaming industry and esports are reaching unprecedented numbers of young people. So who knows how many 30, 40, and 50 year olds will make it to StarCraft II Master Rank in 2030, provided humans haven't gone extinct yet. Also on these plots, you can see how getting good really does cut down your choice reaction time. No matter how old you are, if you manage to get meaningfully better at a skill, your reactions for that skill get better too. And this can keep you in the game for a while. I mean, look, this person is basically StarCraft Gordon Ramsay, swiftly dreaming up delicious five course meals of StarCraft Conquest. They're 34, which is still kinda young for a human, but for a gamer, that's practically crumbling into dust. And at 34, this master rank StarCraft veteran is reacting faster than most gold rank teenagers ever will. But despite the presence of outliers, when you look at the slopes, it's hard to argue that age doesn't beat the crap out of your reaction time. Yeah, this player is really good for 34, but you gotta wonder if putting their knowledge into a younger brain would create some kind of reaction Franken-Jesus. The study describes an endless tug-of-war between constantly slowing reactions and hard-earned decision-making skills. In the words of the researchers, we find no evidence for the common belief expertise should attenuate domain-specific cognitive decline. So it's true that, between 24 and 39, a low-ranked player might lose 9 frames of choice reaction time, while a top-ranked player would lose only 4. But regardless of whether you're winning national tournaments or losing to your cousin, in 15 years, 15% 15 of your choice reaction time will disappear. No matter how much you practice, no matter how good you get, your brain will decline at the same rate as everyone else's. And while that fact might be depressing, it's also pretty fun! At least, I find it kind of fun. Because it lets us make predictions. This paper contains a linear regression that can predict a player's StarCraft choice reaction speed based on their age and skill. The inclusion of a mathematical model in this paper is a wonderful thing, because it allows us to tackle a never-before-answered question of great scientific importance. First off, as you probably know, this is Falcon Punch. Most players don't get hit by Falcon Punch. At a whopping frame 53, almost a full second of startup, Falcon Punch is painfully slow and reactable. But as we've learned, it won't stay that way forever. 
At some point in your life, your brain will make sure of that. So, without further ado, let's find out when you will become Falcon Punchable, just like your sitting duck of a grandma. Here you can see our formulas. They should all spit out a value for log looking doing latency, which is just another way the paper represents choice reaction time. There are different ones for each skill level, but they all have the form player skill coefficient plus 0.01 times years over 24. So if you're bronze rank and 30, it's 6.81 plus 0.01 times 6, or 6.93. That's our log reaction time, so to get a number in milliseconds, we just raise e to the power of 6.93. That gives us 1022 milliseconds, or about a full second of choice reaction time. That might sound like a lot, but keep in mind, bronze rank is... It's bronze. It's actually the bottom 20% of players. If someone's still learning how to play the game, or they just play sometimes for fun and don't care about winning, or they're your grandma, they're probably getting hit by a couple of falcon punches, so it checks out. Now let's look at the other end of the spectrum. If you're a 24 year old in master rank, it's 6.03 plus 0.1 times 0, or just 6.03. That comes out to 415 milliseconds, or about 25 frames. Now it's worth pointing out here that StarCraft and Smash Bros are completely different video games with vastly different situations, equipment, and systems for handling input delay. Plus, all the games in this dataset were played online, and that makes things even more complicated. The researchers don't talk about online play or the input lag of the game itself because they honestly don't need to. I mean, these papers are about comparing humans, not video games. They didn't exactly do all this so some YouTuber could come along and do funny falcon punch math. But that won't stop me from doing it anyway. Because despite everything I just said, these numbers honestly look kind of fine to me. I've done a lot of analysis for Smash Bros cause I'm a massive nerd, and top players' choice-based reactions do tend to be just a little bit faster than 25 frames. That's exactly what we'd expect from a group of people at the upper end of Master Rank. Here you can see MK Leo, the best player in the world, reacting to this attack connecting on frame 25. Of course, this is all subjective and super oversimplified because any given player will have a huge range of reaction times in one match, and if you don't expect something, you react to it way slower, but that's a whole other video. Basically, I'm trying to say that, looking at the numbers, I believe we'll get our best results here if we don't try to mess with the equations at all. And yeah, thinking of myself as potentially having like a 30 frame reaction time was hurting my fragile little elite smasher ego. But then I remembered how often I get hit by this move, and I thought, huh, maybe I really am a fucking turtle. Well folks, it looks like we're finally at the fun part. Simple algebra. Wait, where's the... There was supposed to be confetti there. I don't understand. There we go. So, we got this, and we want to solve for age. We're going to input player skill level at the end, but we can actually find log LDL right now. Because we know the exact time it takes Falcon Punch to start, which is 53 frames, we can actually solve for a log looking doing latency value. First, we convert 53 frames into 883 milliseconds. Then, we just take the natural log of that to get our log LDL, which is 6.78. Now we subtract skill from both sides like it's a Palutena ditto, divide by 0.01, and boom. There's our equation. So, let's say you're the smash equivalent of a platinum rank StarCraft II player, being in the top 40% of competitors, but not the top 20. The paper found the skill coefficient for platinum to be 6.42, so we just plug everything in to get 36 years over 24. Now simply add 24 to that, and you get 60. 60 years old. So, if you stay a solid platinum rank player, but you're not improving past that, and you reach about 60 years old, you will become unable to react to Falcon Punch. Now, I'm lazy, so I made a Python script to do the rest of the math for me, so let's see how old each rank can get before Falcon Punch becomes unreactable. Bronze. Not relevant, since as I've mentioned, you start off with a full second of choice reaction time. A bronze player could be fresh out of the womb, and I'd still be able to Falcon Punch them. Not that I would, I'm just saying that, you know, hypothetically, I could if I wanted to. Silver, the next 20% of players, punchable at 33 years old. Of course, even if you start playing Smash at 33, it shouldn't be too hard to improve enough to make Falcon Punch reactable. Your reaction time at that point is only 9% worse than it would be if you were 24, which isn't really the end of the world. Gold, the middle 20% of players, punchable at 46 years old. You know, the digital age has brought with it so many new and exciting ways to initiate a midlife crisis, and while I can't see the future, I'm pretty sure getting Falcon Punched at 46 is one of them. Platinum, punchable at 60 years old, and Diamond, punchable at 70 years old. These cover the top 40% of players, which probably includes a lot of you watching this video. 
Of course, StarCraft rank percentages probably don't translate perfectly to Smash ones, so you getting Falcon punched exactly 60 or 70 years after your birth isn't a guarantee. But then again, neither is the fact that you'll be alive at that point, so I'm sure you'll agree it's all about probabilities. Also, a big part of reaction time is the actual physical response, you know, having old person hands in addition to your old person eyes and brain, so who knows? I'm sure lots of new technologies will pop up over the next few decades. Maybe fancy robot hands will give you the power to become a grandparent that doesn't get falcon punched. And finally, master the top 2% of players. Falcon punchable at 99 years old. Yep. Sorry, centenarians, you might be able to dodge death for a whole century, but you're absolutely not going to dodge my falcon punches. This also means that players at the top level of competition can live quite a long life without ever becoming falcon punchable at all. Of course, this would require them to remain master level players through their 80s and 90s to stay on the right curve, which could prove difficult, but personally, I think that's something we should all strive for. So that's everything. You are now blessed with the knowledge of why I could falcon punch your grandma and when I'll be able to falcon punch you. Needless to say, this was only a brief look at the topic, but this video has gotten way too long as it is. If you want to learn about sleep, which actually has a huge impact on reaction time and might kind of probably be ruining your life, I made a whole video on that, which you should definitely check out. Be sure to like, subscribe. Wait, what? Did I hear that right? You want a more satisfying conclusion? I, I told you it was going to be depressing, but you kept watching anyway, and now I gotta try to sprinkle glitter on this mound of poop? Fine. Uh, listen. When I was first learning Smash, I met a player online that I never forgot. He told me he used to play at a crazy speed and mash buttons for hours every single day. But when his hands started to hurt so much, he couldn't bear it anymore. He was diagnosed with a repetitive strain injury that forced him to adapt or never play again. He started using King Dildi, the slowest, strongest character he could think of, so that instead of just pressing lots of buttons, he could learn to press very few buttons and maybe use a couple brain cells. He told me that playing Dildi opened his eyes to a whole new dimension of the game, and that it taught him how to predict his opponent's movements and kill them in five hits. And I was inclined to believe him, because he kept on predicting my movements and killing me in five hits. You know, in between telling me his whole fucking life story. Let's just say one thing King Dildi didn't teach him was humility. Anyway, ever since then I've had a deep appreciation for the brain's ability to compensate and adapt in the context of esports. Because games like StarCraft 2 and Smash Bros are so much deeper than clicking a button on humanbenchmark.com. Reactions and execution are important, but they're far from everything. Look at Daigo Umahara, the fighting game legend. He's 39 now, but that doesn't stop him from competing at the highest level of play. Even as the years wear down his reaction time, he's still learning and still improving. And despite the almost sadistically grim tone the researchers take throughout their paper, I mean, come on, they literally named it Over the Hill at 24, strangely enough, they choose to end it on that optimistic idea of constant progress by saying something that totally reframed how I thought about all of this. To quote them, At the broadest level, our research, among many others, contributes to a more dynamic portrait of aging. The veneer of stable competence in midlife masks genuine adult development. Cognitive motor decline begins even in the midst of continuing brain growth. Rather than stability, we have lifelong flux. Our day-to-day -day performance is at every age the result of the constant interplay between change and adaptation. Now, I just want to take a moment to appreciate how that is the single least depressing interpretation of all these facts, and yet, it's not quite bullshit enough that my brain wants to reject it. From the moment you turn 24, your performance is a battle you fight. You're always acquiring knowledge and growing, whether you're 30, 40, or old enough to get falcon punched. So be strong, no matter how much life forces you to fight your own body and brain. Your gamer energy is always increasing. Even if decline is still the word that describes you, behind that mask is real growth. Whenever Daigo has to fight some supercharged 19-year-old on Adderall, he's playing in four frames and counting of extra input lag, and he's winning anyway. That, to me, is kind of badass. So here's how it's gonna happen. If you aren't 24 yet, it'll start soon. And if you are, it's started already. That start is so slight that you might even be able to deny it, to sustain the hope that biology might have made some fortunate mistake and forgotten your position on the cycle of life. But sooner or later, as you age, you'll begin to feel the frames slip away. And one fateful day, just like any other, you'll step into your Nintendo Soft Wii Station X and challenge your grandchild to the usual match of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Melee Turbo VR 3 and Knuckles. The game will start, they'll falcon punch, and it'll hit.
But maybe, just maybe, you'll take a deep breath, make your character stand back up, and teach that kid some fucking respect.